On today's episode, we talk all about drop bags. Thank you guys for tuning in. We got a lot of great questions on one of our early episodes pertaining to drop bags. So I wanna cover some of the basics, some things I've learned, and then answer some of your guys' questions. We wanna start off talking about just what a drop bag is. Some of you who are newer to the sport of trail and ultra running, you will find out many times that drop bags are allowed, as well as such things as crews and pacers. These are terms you don't normally see in road races. So a drop bag is a supply bag that you provide to the race organization for them to transport to certain aid stations along the course. And you can put inside this drop bag essentially whatever you want, uh, as long as it fits within the diameters or weight limits of the race, which sometimes does vary uh, you know, I'm a race director myself, and the logistics of transporting bags for anywhere from you know 50 people to a couple hundred people sometimes becomes quite a chore, especially after getting all the aid station stuff there. So a lot of times there is some sort of a, a limit. Uh, so let's get right into um, you know one option for a drop bag. A lot of times I'll use uh, like a shoe box, a sport bag, duffel bag. This is a great example right here, this is from High Desert Drop Bags, and they've kind of made a couple improvements to a standard drawstring bag uh, that is quite nice. So first off, they've got some pretty bright colors. They also have other options. It's got a large zipper on the top, so you're not gonna lose anything. If you have just those drawstring bags, a lot of times, you know, things can fall out, they get loosened up. Uh, this zipper is gonna be nice and tight. Uh, got a little bit of a loop here, you can you know, carry three or four of these up to the start line of the race and drop them in each location. Uh, and then it's got this tab over here. A lot of times, you know, the standard method uh, for identifying your drop bag is you're gonna wanna put your bib number, your last name, and potentially your phone number uh, in case that it doesn't get returned to you as well as the aid station location. So they give you this nice little tab here. Uh, you could put a piece of duct tape and write with a Sharpie all of your pertinent information. Um, so that's, again, from High Desert Drop Bags. And there's also other companies that do make drop bags out there. Um, we'll get into a little bit more of that uh, in some of our question and answer period. So when I'm looking at doing my personal drop bags for a race, there's a few things that I consider. First off, how long is the race? If it's a 50K, 50 mile, 100 mile, I will do things a little bit differently. For a 50K race, I the first number one thing to do is go on the race website and see where drop bags are allowed. Also, you have to ask yourself, are you gonna have a crew? If you have a crew person, you typically won't need a drop bag because your crew can bring you whatever you need and have it there with you as they move along the course. So I, oftentimes I'll just, start with that list and then kind of create my race plan around that. One thing to consider with your crew, um, and this is something I've experienced before, just in case your crew does have an issue on course, you might wanna consider still having a drop bag with some backup supplies. That way if there's, you know, you can have a crew that has a flat tire and they miss you at one of those checkpoints. Um, so again, it's something to consider in some of the longer 100 mile races where there's, you know, maybe six or eight hours in between periods of time when you see your crew, it's probably not going to be that big of a deal. Uh, but other ones, you may want to have that backup drop bag or even just send the drop bag to the aid station with the race management and then your crew can just go get that bag when they get there um, just to make sure that it's there no matter what. So. A lot of times in my bag is I want to look at definitely nutrition products that aren't going to be provided by the race. That'll be probably the number one thing in my drop bags, as well as um, any sort of um, extra clothing, extra jacket, extra water bottles or packs. 
depending on the stretch of trail you have ahead. So a lot of times I'll start with maybe just one handheld bottle for a race. It's early in the morning, it's nice and cool. And by the time I hit my mile 20, I wanna get my hydration pack on with another bottle with more nutrition in it. So you don't have to carry that whole pack for the first 20 miles, you can kind of switch. Uh, another thing to consider is your lights and your lighting, extra batteries. Definitely want to kind of assume the worst possible situation. I've had many times where there's no way I think that I will be that slow into a certain aid station to pick up my light. Uh, but for whatever reason, I get sick, my stomach goes sour on me, get some sort of an injury along the way, ends up, ends up taking a lot longer than I expect. So whatever you do, it's always a good idea to even, you know, wherever you plan to normally have your lights or batteries, put that, a backup light in the one before and just carry it with you. Or if you get there in time, you can just leave it, uh, but it's there just in case. Another consideration is actually sending just an empty drop bag to the very first possible aid station you can. If you have a jacket or an extra layer or a headlamp or flashlight that you're carrying from the start, when a start is in the dark. If you have just an empty bag sitting there waiting for you at that first drop bag spot, you can dump and unload any equipment, lights that you don't need, which will then be transported back to the start line for you and you don't have to carry it the rest of the race. Let's talk uh, 50 mile, 100 mile races. We covered the 50K a little bit. Um, probably a 50K race, all I'm really gonna have is uh, some nutrition products and so I can kind of cut in half the amount of stuff I have to carry. I can easily carry all my nutrition for a 50k race but again it's kind of nice to just split that up a little bit. Uh, when I do go ahead and put my nutrition together I'll usually put it into a small Ziploc bag uh, that way I can just uh, grab it uh, right out of my drop bag. I have everything in it. I don't need to be hunting around, fishing around inside that bag grab it, dump off my trash, and give it to the aid station there. And then as I move along the course, I can load up my pack or my pockets with the different gels um, or you know, mashed potato burritos, um, shot blocks, whatever kind of nutrition I'm carrying, kind of load that up as I go on the move. I can just grab that one bag and I know everything's in there. Uh, when I do plan out my drop bags, uh, oftentimes I will create a chart and I like to look at things like the number of miles in between aid stations and drop bags. Typically 50K, just one bag is necessary. In a 50 miler, probably do about three drop bags if the race provides it. And you know it could be maybe six to eight for 100 if they provide that many locations. It's kind of interesting how different events approach the drop bag situation. When I ran uh, Ultra Trail du Mont Blanc over in Europe this last summer, there's only one drop bag for the entire race and that comes at uh, about the halfway point, mile 50. And they give everyone, it's like a plastic version of this with a drawstring and you tie it at the top and it has your bib number on it. And so that's all you get. You check in your one drop bag for the race. And other than that, you have to carry everything with you uh, from the start and just rely upon those aid stations. So it's kind of a little bit more self-reliant than we have here in the US. I think at a race like Western States, you can probably have you know 10 to 12 drop bags. You know, Don't quote me on that. Um, do we wanna look that up real quick? No. Um, so there's a lot more opportunity to kind of dial in exactly what you want. Um, so for, for those 100 mile races, uh, again, looking at the sunrise, the sunset, when those different key points, you know, at night it's gonna be a lot colder. It's always a good idea, especially if it's gonna be raining, to put an extra jacket, an extra layer, a uh, dry pair of clothes that you can change into. A lot of people wonder about shoes. You know, should I put extra shoes into drop bags? And for me personally, for a race up to 50 miles in length, I will oftentimes just stick with the same pair of shoes that I start the race in. For races of 100 miles in length, I really do think it's a good idea to switch at least once, even if it's the same style or pair of shoes, 
just because you've been compressing that foam down all day and it's nice to switch out your socks and shoes at least once and you kind of feel a little bit refreshed if nothing else uh, underfoot. All right, so we are going to go into some of your questions and these come, came from Facebook from our Air Viper group trail run page. And our first question is from Tim Plummer. Are there any races where you should have multiple drop bags? And I would say yes. So one point that I want to make too is sometimes races that are in a looped format, uh, you'll actually access the same bags more than once. And that's kind of convenient because you can take items out and drop items off as you go. Um, a lot of our Aero Viper races will have a finish line drop bag that you'll access a few times and then some remote drop bags as well. And so I would say definitely in the longer distance races, if there are opportunities to have drop bags, definitely should use them and utilize them if it goes according to your plan uh, with your nutrition, with your lighting, with your different outerwear and your jackets. I think it's a really great idea to, you know, you, you don't, that's kind of why we enter races. Uh, you know, we could go out on self-supported training runs and load up our big backpacks and, and probably go for days uh, without resupply, uh, almost like backpackers and hikers, but it's kind of the reason that we sign up for these races and they have these logistics is so we can run a long ways and we have that support structure built in and this ability to have someone, you know, have a, a cache for you, have that drop bag out there for you. So definitely would take advantage of that if it's available. Uh, next up from Margaret Westlake, she asks, my biggest issue with drop bags is how to balance having enough with having so much that you can't find things in it quickly when you have no crew. How do you balance this? So that's a great point. Uh, you know, as you can imagine, if you have you know, a bag like this, it just has one compartment and you throw everything in there. I think utilizing, you know, smaller bags inside, you might put all your clothing in a large Ziploc bag, all your nutrition in a sandwich or a quart size bag, so that when you reach in there, you just grab all your components, you can set them out and see what you have to work with. And I would say if you really have that much stuff that you can't find it, um, I would say one of two things. If you're the type of person that really wants that safety and security of having, you know, I don't know, band-aids and, and anti-chafing and nutrition and, a, you know, I don't know, an ace bandage or tape or whatever you need, and you want that easily findable, you might need a more robust drop bag. And there are some companies that are making some really cool products these days um, that have different compartments and and separate zippers that you can easily access pretty much everything that you need. Um, you could even use, um, they have like these first aid kits like that are built in with clear plastic. You could utilize something like that uh, just to organize yourself. Um, but I would also be careful on bringing too much. I think that can also be something where uh, it's a bit overwhelming. And I think if you're, if you're trained up well for the event you're doing, um, that's also the reason why there are aid stations. They often have, you know, probably roughly 75% of the things that you need while you're out there. Uh, utilizing those is, is really a good idea. Um, when you don't have crews, um, I think it's especially important just to plan a little bit better. Uh, and you can all also sometimes utilize some of the volunteers at those aid stations. Uh, Lori Sipa asks, do you differ what you pack in your drop bags based on distance, 50K, 50 mile, 100 mile, etc., Or do you just pack everything and the kitchen sink just in case? Um, so I'm definitely the type of runner that will not overpack on things. I like to definitely plan and think about what the conditions are, uh, but you know, I don't want to overthink it and I don't want to really over plan um, but adequately prepare and plan. If I do know that a race is going to be up at altitude and have storms, I will go a little bit above and beyond on the cold weather gear, just because that can be a debilitating thing for your race. You know, hypothermia can be a real thing. Staying dry can make you a lot more comfortable. 
and a lot less likely to drop from a race. Uh, as far as nutrition goes too, uh, a lot of times I think people overdo it and they pack too much and they could do with a lot less, especially with the fact that there are aid stations out there. You know, if you know that the race is gonna have Coca-Cola, uh, you know, don't pack it. Um, I think that, you know, we need to rely upon those aid stations. Um, it's just those special dietary needs, things that you know you want, things that you know that work for you, uh, definitely do pack those. Um, so we have Faith Shelton asking, I would love to know what cooler type bags might be very durable. Drop bag friendly portions for warm to hot runs, nighttime necessities. So let's go through these. Uh, so durable cooler type bags. Um, I, I do see a, a wide variety of drop bags that are out there. Um, I've seen everything from you know your grocery store plastic bag that from Safeway, they just, you know, you put your stuff in there and tie it off to even the, just the paper bags from a grocery store, they're just open top, which is never a good idea. Um, I think a, like a lunch box, something kid might take to school or you might pack your lunch in uh, to go to work uh, would work fairly well. Um, they even have ones that have kind of a like a hard plastic insert, so it's gonna keep its shape uh, even when it's like tossed around. A lot of times, uh, you know, these races, they'll just stuff them all into a, a truck or an SUV uh, and something that, you know, isn't gonna get crushed or if you have particular items in there, um, you might want something that's a little more durable there. Um, drop bag friendly portions for warm to hot runs. Hmm, not sure exactly what that question is. What is that asking? Hmm. Oh, they well insulated drop bag. I mean, I guess like maybe how to keep your your items cooler for for hotter runs. I mean, some uh, something you can do is like freeze your water bottles ahead of time. Um, get something that is really well insulated. Um, I don't think races are going to be hauling around you know big ice chests for every runner. I certainly you know, wouldn't want that for my event either. Um, but I think, yeah, oftentimes also in warm to hot races, I know that at all of ours, we make sure we have enough ice for everyone and enough cool water. So uh, if nothing else, look for the aid stations to be supplying that. And if they're not, you know, reconsider whether you'd want to run that event again. Uh, nighttime necessities, obviously headlamp, flashlight, Always carry a backup and always have extra batteries in your drop bags in every single one. And again, I want to stress whatever you think, whatever your plan is, wherever you think you'll be, where you need that light, put one in the drop bag before just in case. You never know what's going to happen and you don't want to have to drop from a race uh, just because you don't have a light and you're caught in the dark. Uh, Lindy Manwaring asks, are fancy drop bags like Victory worth it or are my Target and other shopping bags fine? I think this is a little bit about preference. You can certainly uh, you know, get a commercial drop bag such as this one or the ones she's talking about, uh, Victory Sport Design is more of a high-end drop bag which is designed and founded by Victor Ballesteros and he's an ultra runner from California. He's put a lot of thought into making a full featured drop bag that is not only durable, uh, but also easy to find all of your different equipment. So if you're the type of person that really likes to be super well organized, wants something durable, and uh, you know really likes to know where their stuff is at, I would say check out a bag like Victory Sport Design. I think it can be well worth it just to have that peace of mind that you know that you've got everything laid out and everything there. If you're uh, the type of person that uh, can get by with, with less, then I think a simple drawstring bag or a shopping bag with a zipper can be fine. Um, I always prefer something with a zipper uh, versus a drawstring, just because my peace of mind, I know that that is zippered shut and it's gonna be there when I get to that aid station. Uh, ben Nichols asks, what's the weirdest item you found in a leftover drop bag? 
We just opened up a few from the Black Canyon Ultras and I think the weirdest thing in there was diaper rash cream. Can only imagine what that's used for. Okay, we have a question from Todd Trimble. Does anyone ever put a change of shoes in their drop bag? Yes, and I think uh, I've touched on that a little bit. I would say, you know, something like a 50K, I don't think it's really um, necessary. Uh, but again, it's a little bit for personal preference. I think if if you're at the point where you can't run a 50K race in, the same, in one pair of shoes, then you probably need to look at the shoes you're wearing and your training methods because I've run 100 mile races without even taking my socks and shoes off. Um, but on the flip side, I've also really appreciated that change of shoes halfway through. Uh, so it just kind of depends, but I would say uh, if it's your first 50 mile, if it's your first 100 mile race, bring a couple of options because you never know what's gonna happen. If you want a little more cushion, if, you, if the shoe you're wearing isn't gonna hold up for that distance, if you've never run that far before. So I would definitely throw a pair of shoes either in with your crew or in one of your drop bags halfway through the race. Um, let's see, Periscope viewers, we have some people streaming in live with us this week. Do you guys have any questions? For those of you viewing, I'll take a couple of those now. If you wanna just type them in right there. I'm looking at you four, there's four of you tuning in. What items would you say to never, so what are must haves items in your drop bag and what items should you never bring? Um, must have items for ultras, I would say nutrition that you know works for you is a must have item. I would say never bring, um, <laughs> I mean there's probably a lot of stuff you never, like weapons, um, probably warm milk, I don't know. <laughs> Ghost chili peppers, I don't know, I think it's really, um, I mean, yeah, I don't know. That's my answer, I guess. What have you brought but never used? Oh, good question. Um, probably, I would say pair of shoes. I had packed it just in case, a uh, pair of socks. Also clothing items, you know, you have jackets in there just in case and you're running strong enough where you just don't really need it. Um, kind of like a piggyback off of drop bags and items I've never used would be, oh, first aid. Uh, so a piggyback off of drop bags and items I've never used would be mandatory equipment. So a race like UTMB requires a kit and certain amount of jackets and long sleeve shirts. Uh, this, and they, you have to carry it no matter what the weather is. So this last year when it was hot, we still had to carry waterproof pants, waterproof jacket, long sleeve shirt, gloves, stuff I literally did not use the entire 37 hours I was on course, but I had to have it all in my pack the entire time. Uh, we had another question about first aid kits and blister care. And I would say not a bad idea to carry uh, something like that. I think um, if you are, know that you're prone to blisters, I would definitely pack something that would help you with that. Um, uh, first aid kit, I personally don't, I don't ever throw a band-aid in my pack or in my drop bag, um, but I've seen it done and if it gives you some more peace of mind. Um, Go for it. Okay, we are going to move on to a segment we do each week called Trail Fail. And these are bumps, bruises, and falls from the trail. You guys submit them and I'm gonna view one. I see the tab here. So we're gonna put up on the screen, actually I'm gonna let our live viewers on Periscope also see this, um, Trail Fail. I'm going to the web page now. Oh God, this is Trail Fail 3, Squaw Peak, Phoenix, Arizona, Descending Squaw Peak. I'm pretty sure that, like, I've never seen a ligament exposed in the skin, but I think that's what I'm looking at there, and that's disgusting. Like, it looks like a bone or a ligament. All right, well, I think I'm not gonna eat lunch today. 
enjoy that, guys. Uh, thanks for submitting that one. Thank you guys for tuning in this week, and I really appreciate all of your questions relating to drop bags. If you have any additional questions, be sure to comment below and we will answer them. Stay tuned for future episodes. You Make sure to subscribe to our channel, Era Viper Running, and you can ask us questions at any time on social media platforms using the hashtag AskTrail. So we look forward to the next episode.